I'm Sherry Turkle. I am a professor at MIT. I'm trained as a sociologist and psychologist. And from the minute I hit MIT at the beginning of the personal computer revolution in the late 70s, I've been studying people and their relationships to technology. Not what computers do for us, but what computers do to us, to our relationships with each other, and to our relationships with ourselves, really how computers change the way we think. We look to robots, and in the future even robot companions, to be more to each other than in ways, where, in places where we've disappointed each other perhaps even as companions or teachers or nanny bots or elder care bots, and how we look to online life to, as places where can we can be more to each other than we've allowed ourselves to be um, in our face-to-face -face lives. So I look at sociable robots and sociable networks and the social network as places of intimate technology and in these two new places, the sociable robots and the sociable networks, um, I find cause to be more pessimistic and more kind of spinning a cautionary tale mm -hmm. than I had before. You've been called the couples therapist between humanity and technology, but, <laughs> but people go to couples therapy with the hopes of making things work. So when it comes to the relationship between humanity and technology, what steps do you think need to be taken? in order for this relationship to, to work. The idea that robots will be our best companions, robots will be our new best friends. I mean, these are, these are research projects at MIT to make a robot that will be your new best friend. I don't think that robots should be our new best friends. Uh, robots will never know the arc of a human life, will never know death, will never fear death, will never know life, will never know what it is to have a child, will never know what it is to fear the loss of a child, will never know what it is to know life. Why would they be somebody I'd want to talk about about my child? What kind of, that's what you need a best friend for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what's with this robot best friend thing? Robots of the elderly, elder care bots, nanny bots. I mean, we're gonna get ourselves in a lot of trouble. So if I'm couples therapist to, between humanity and technology, I'd like to see us having relationships that make sense and that aren't ones of substitution. Essentially, that's what I, I... So many things for technology to do to help, as opposed to substituting where people, where you really need a person. What are your thoughts on robot evolution or the merging of man and machine? Well, I think there's going to be a certain amount of merging of technology and people. Um, like, uh, already there are chips for Parkinson's, there'll be chips for, I wear contact lenses, I consider that a merging. Um, there's going to be cochlear implants, there's going to be heart implants. I mean, I think we're, we're unproblematically on our way to improving our bodies and um, increasingly there'll be ways in which we're going to be improving our brains um, by the use of technology. But I once did a study that I loved, which was asking people, would you take a chip, an implant, that would give you calculus, just a calculus implant? And most people said, yeah, they would take calculus by an implant. And then it was, would you take a chip that would give you the works of Dostoevsky? And most people said no. Hmm. The Dostoevsky, Shakespeare, Faulkner, you had to read it. You had to be a person and experience it. You, they didn't want the skill. They wanted the experience as a person of the struggle through it. They didn't want to just have it. I think that, that there's going to be resistance to um, the automation of human, of human life. You know, I think that ha things that have to do with the body and replacement of knees and hips and joints and we're going to be very tempted to improve our, to improve our physical stock and I think it's going to be hard for us to know when to stop and what the limits of that are and when we want to say that we're 
we don't want to be superhuman humans, and I think that's going to be moral and ethical decisions that are coming upon us fast. I don't see this merging with machine decision as being a sort of slam dunk, yes, I'm just going to become a robot. Uh, I think there's a lot of species chauvinism that people are going to have about maintaining their identity as human beings. Why do you think we have this desire to, to outsource the human experience? I think we are lonely and afraid of intimacy, and I think robots touch on some button where we can have friendship without the demands of intimacy, companionship without the demands of intimacy. We can somehow have connection without risk. Um, they push some button where we will have where, where we will never have to be alone. We will never have to be alone, and yet we will never really have to be threatened by, by the risks of intimacy or abandonment. Is there a danger that without risk and without intimacy that we become yes. robots? Yes. I mean, I think we, we, we lose. It, when, when I say we shortchange ourselves, I think we become less. We short, when you shortchange yourself, you become lessened. You become more limited in your capacity to, to connect. When you connect with a robot, you haven't connected because there's nobody home to connect to. So you connect to something that's not there to really forge a relationship with, so you don't really have any practice in forging a mutual relationship. So I don't think relationally nothing good is going to come out of I'm in love with my robot, I'm connected with my robot, I'm, I'm here with my robot, my robot loves me, I love my robot. I, you know, it's, 